Hey everyone, Simon here from Top Tennis Training, and in this video, we're going to compare the two handed backhand to the one handed backhand and hopefully help make it easier for you to choose which one you should stick with. Let's start with a two hander. If we look at some of the best backhands in the history of the game, Agassi, Djokovic, Nalbandian, Safin, these players all had two handed backhands. And if we look at some of the one-handers who had exceptional backhands, number one I'd say is Stan Wawrinka, Federer, Dimitrov. You've also got players like Tommy Robredo. But if we compare the one-handers to the two-handers, in general, for me, the two-handers are a little bit better and a little bit ahead of the one-handers. And there's a big reason why this is. With the two-handers, we can use that rotational power to a greater effect than the one-handers. In general, when you hit a one-handed backhand, most of the pros, most of the top players, they'll finish in that side-on position. So they're hitting the shot and they're using more the extension of the arm and the back muscles to actually generate the forward phase of the swing. The two-handers, we can use the extension of the arms, but we can also use the rotational power at the same time. So as I hit, I'm able to uncoil with my upper body and then finish rotating. And for most one-handers, this is a very hard thing to time. Now Stan Wawrink is the exception to this. He's someone who can set up for the one-hander and then really unload on the finish. He's someone who uses that hip rotation through the shot. But this is one of the only players who's able to pull it off time and time again when he wants to. For most one-handers, they're hitting the shot and they're staying side on. Federer, Dimitrov, these are two players who really exaggerate that finish. When you uh, see Federer, he's hitting that shot and his arms sometimes almost touch behind his back because of that stability through staying side on. He's extending out, he's extending and he's stretching the chest in that finish and this blocks him from opening up. So for Federer to get power, he has to have a very strong back, a very strong scapular region, so that he's able to actually hit that shot, extend, and then pull it in at the very end. Whereas a player like Djokovic will get his power from that rotation, from the trunk, because he's able to use that rotation through the contact point. So that's one of the major differences between the one-handed and the two-handed backhand the ability for the two-handers out there to rotate through the contact point and really coil and uncoil through the shot. Now there are many other things that separate the one-handers from the two-handers. For two-handers out there, we tend to use more, the, the bottom hand tends to be more a continental grip, or if it does go slightly further around, it's not a full eastern. If you're someone who has a two-hander and you're using a full eastern on your bottom hand, this is a big issue because you're able only to really spin the ball, you're not really able to drive through it and flatten it out. So for most of the best two-handers out there, they're using a continental or around the continental grip on the bottom hand and the top hands between a semi-western and an eastern forehand grip. And the top hand really should be the boss on the two-hander. If we uh, break it down to percentage, for most strokes, it's going to be about 60% my top hand dominating and 40% my bottom. Now this will change on some shots. If I'm flattening the shot out, I'll use the bottom hand more to drive through the shot. So it's almost like I'm guiding the ball with my right hand. If I want more spin, then I'll use the top hand more. 
So in a heavy topspin shot, I might go 70% top hand and 30% bottom hand. And on a flat shot, it might be 50-50 or 60-40 in the bottom hand's favor. So we have that top hand, and this is what allows us to actually feel that we're hitting like a forehand. So when we have a, the one-hander, we're using that extension through the arm, so the tricep muscle, and we're using the extension in the shoulder, and then at the very end of the finish, we'll use the back extension. The, the scapula is almost coming together at the very end of that swing. So the muscle groups that we're using are very different. With the top hand, the left hand on the two-handers, we're using more the chest for that extension. So the chest muscles are much stronger than the back muscles. Now, if you were to go in the gym and do the bench press, you could lift a much heavier weight than if you're doing a back row. So the chest muscles allow for more extension and more power stability through that contact point because we're using that top hand to help us guide that shot. Even if you don't extend, you're still using that chest when you make contact for that stability. So in general, this is why that two-hander will be more of a stable shot. The stability at contact, because we're supported with the chest muscle from that top hand, the stability at contact is much greater than for the one-handers. Now for the one hand, the stability is coming mainly from the wrist, from the forearm muscles, from the tricep, and from the shoulder region. So if we're weak in one of those areas, at contact we'll feel unstable. If you want to feel stable at the contact point on the one-hander, you have to really strengthen these muscles. And for most players, this is why the two-hander is a better option, because we have the support of both hands. We're using that top hand like a forehand. So as I make contact, I'm feeling that my left hand is leading the way and this is the same feeling that I feel when I'm hitting a forehand. That right hand is leading the way and here the left hand is leading the way. Now in terms of the stances, in general when you see the best one-handers, they set up in either a neutral or a closed stance. So the closed stance is where the right leg, if they're right-handed, would come across the front of the left leg. So they're hitting the shot like this. And this requires them to actually block their body off so then recovering becomes a little bit trickier. Now if we look at someone like a Djokovic in his prime or an Agassi, as they're making contact, they're rotating with that back leg and this will allow them to push back into a good position on the court. So that's another benefit of the two-hander. We can rotate through the contact point so recovery becomes much quicker than for the one-hander. If I'm using a closed stance on my one-hander, I'm hitting, I'm stopping, and then I have to either push back with the right leg, or I then open up, and then I push in. So it's a different footwork pattern when I'm using that closed stance as opposed to the neutral stance. One-handers can hit an open stance, but it's a shot that we don't see very often. It's a very hard shot to master for the one-handers because loading on this outside leg and getting power through that extension is something that takes a lot of work. Whereas with the two-handers, the open stance is a very easy shot to master because again, it's like we're hitting that forehand. It's like we're hitting a left-handed forehand from that position. Now for the one-handers out there, don't feel that I'm trying to change your mind and switch over to a two-hander. You can have a great one-handed backhand and it's something that we've actually built a whole course around with Tommy Robredo. So you can still build a great one-hander. For the one-handers, it tends to take longer to really get to grips and really hit a good one-hander consistently well. If you want to have that one-hander, you're gonna to have to just be patient and really stick with it, master the fundamentals, master all the swing path, master the footwork, and master every element of that one-hander, but in general, it will take you longer. Now, there are a few big benefits of using a one-hander over a two-hander. The one-handers have more freedom because they only have that one hand on the swing. So the, the swing path could be very uh, varied depending on the height of the ball. One-handers have more range of motion through that contact point and through the contact zone because they only have that one hand. If I have the one hand, I can now reach out over to here to hit my back hand. With the two hands, I can't reach that far because I've got two hands on the grip. So the ability to actually maneuver the rack ahead through the contact point and actually through the swing path is greater on the one-hander because we only have that one hand. It's also easier to develop the slice when you're a one-handed player. If you have the two hands, 
you're always relying on that top hand to help you hit that shot. And when you have the slice, of course, you're only using the one hand. So for the one-handers out there, it's easier for them to develop a really good slice backhand. This is why, in general, the players with the best slice are one-handers, because they've developed that ability to hit with the one hand, so translating that into a slice is much easier. Now, the other big benefit for the one-handers out there is the ability to hit on the run. For two-handers out there, it's a very hard shot to hit while moving through the ball. So, in general, you'll see players using the open stance on the two-handers. This is a great shot to have, but sometimes it's impossible to stop before you actually make contact. And this is where the one-handers have the benefit. They can actually hit and run through the contact point because of that freedom through the contact zone. So the main pros and cons for both shots. Two-handers, we can use the top hand like it's a forehand. We can use the rotational power to greater effect. We can really open up with the, with the trunk and with the hips. We can really coil and uncoil through the contact point. We also feel more stable at the contact point because we have the both hands supporting the racket head. And in general, the two-hander is an easier shot to get to grips with. For the one-handers out there, you have more freedom through the contact point. It's a freer shot, it's more uh, loose, you can be more relaxed and still generate great power. You also have the ability to hit on the run much easier than for the two-handers. And you also have the ability to develop a great slice when you're a one-handed player. So there you have it guys, the pros and cons of both the two-handed and the one-handed backhands. Hopefully this has given you some insight into which one you should uh, actually stick with and which one you should develop. Now if you want more help with your one-handed backhand, we have a whole course with Tommy Robredo. And if you want more help with your two-handed backhand, we have an entire course with David Albanian. So two great players, two players with exceptional backhands are going to teach you how to hit a better one-handed or two-handed backhand. If you want to find out more about either course, click the link under this video and there you can go and watch the free videos from each course. If you've liked this video, give it a thumbs up. Also subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell so you get our latest videos as soon as we release them. All the best guys, Simon from TTT signing off. See you soon.